Module Eight: Pastimes. Unit Eight A: Reading and Vocabulary. Exercise One, Page One Hundred and Twenty Two. Out of the ordinary. Brian Potter has been sandboarding for the past seven years. He loves it because he can do it pretty much anywhere there is sand. He says, "I'm a real speed freak." And I find nothing more exciting than to take out my board and whiz down the sand dunes. The general idea of sandboarding is the same as snowboarding. People simply strap a board to their feet and slide down a hill. Brian says, "Last year, I entered the international sandboarding championships in Germany. There were around fifty thousand entrants, and I came one hundredth. So I was pretty proud." Carla Murphy is known in certain circles as a zorbanaut. This is because she spends some of her free time inside a large inflatable plastic ball called a zorb. Zorbing is so much fun. I just can't get enough, she says. Zorbing involves rolling down a steep hill strapped inside a ball, which can reach speeds of up to fifty to sixty kilometers per hour if the hill is steep enough. Up to three people can be inside at the same time. It's fantastic. You're totally protected from bumps and knocks by the zorb, but you bounce around as if you are weightless. Anyone from six to sixty can do it. Carla explains. This bizarre activity originated in New Zealand, and now there are centres all around the world. Carla thinks it's great. When we start rolling, we just start laughing, and we can't stop. Paul Lynch has been practicing ice climbing for several years now, and has climbed many frozen waterfalls. My parents took me skiing to the Alps when I was a child, and ever since I've been addicted to the mountains. I moved to Canada a few years ago, and I fell in love with ice climbing. I spend most of my free time climbing ice in the Rockies. Basically, ice climbing involves swinging an axe into the ice above your head. And pulling yourself up on it, you need a lot of equipment such as a helmet, rope, and boots for ice climbing. And of course, it's very physical, so you really have to be in good shape," says Paul. Harry Bolton didn't really like sport at all until he discovered something both new and unusual. I was listening to the radio one day when I heard something that I thought must have been a joke. The DJ was talking about underwater hockey. When I realised it actually was a real sport, I decided to find out more about it. To my surprise, I found a local team, and before I knew it, I was part of it. Unlike water polo, where the action takes place above the water, underwater hockey is played at the bottom of the pool. Players wear masks, flippers, and snorkels during the game. The rules are really simple. You just have to slide the puck into the opposing team's goal," says Harry. Underwater hockey was invented by a British diving club in 1954, and was originally called Octopush. Harry told us, "Unfortunately, it's not much of a spectator sport, as all people watching from outside the pool can see are lots of splashing and flippers." Unit Eight B, listening and speaking, Exercise One, page one hundred and twenty-four. Windsurfing, squash, cricket, rugby, badminton. 
long jump, high jump, tennis, water polo, javelin throwing, volleyball, scuba diving, hurdles, ice hockey. Aerobics, karate, gymnastics, basketball, snowboarding, jogging, climbing, cycling, football, golf. Swimming. Exercise four, page one hundred and twenty-four. Bill, I am on both my school team and a local team, so I have training most evenings and play in matches at the weekends. Actually, last season I was the top scorer on my school team. My sport means everything to me. Even when I'm not playing, I'm kicking a ball around in the garden. Amanda, my dad and I have been in my village team for about three years now. I've been getting a lot better lately, apparently. I've caught a few really difficult balls recently. And I scored the most runs I had ever scored in last week's match. A lot of people say it's quite boring to watch a whole match because it can be quite a slow game. But my family enjoy coming down to the green and watching me play on Sunday afternoons, especially when it's my turn to bat. Steve, I have always lived by the sea, so I love all kinds of water sports. But this is definitely my favourite. It was quite difficult to learn at first because you have to pull up the sail, which is quite heavy, and keep your balance at the same time. Now I'm actually quite good, and have even won a few competitions recently. I can't describe to you how amazing it is to feel the power of the wind pushing you through the waves. Exercise six B, page one hundred and twenty-four. Are you doing anything after school? Yes, I'm going to play tennis. Really? Where are you going to play? At the courts just behind my house. Oh, I didn't know there were courts there. They're not easy to see from the street. Do you like tennis? Yes, I love tennis. I used to play a bit in my old town. Are you any good at it? I'm not bad. Good. Do you fancy coming along? I'd love to, but I don't have my racket with me. That's all right. You can borrow my spare one. Great. Shall we meet outside school then? Exercise eight. Page one hundred and twenty-five. We spoke to some young people to find out about what sports they play and what they like about them. Speaker one. I love tennis. I've been playing since I was quite young. At first, I used to play just for fun, but now I take part in different tournaments around the country. I've even won some prize money. Speaker two. Football is my life, and I play as often as I can. Recently, I left my boots in another team's changing rooms, and I missed a match because I didn't realise. I was more upset about that than losing my boots. Speaker three. In the winter, I go snowboarding as often as I can. Even though I've been doing it for a long time now, 
Still nothing beats the thrill of sliding fast down a mountain. It still gives me a real rush of energy and an amazing feeling of excitement every time I do it. Speaker 4 I started swimming as part of my therapy after I broke my leg. After my leg was better, I carried on going because I loved it so much. I go at least three times a week now. Speaker 5 My sport is ice skating. I've been doing it for quite a long time now, but I don't take it very seriously. I'm not at all bothered about competing. I just do it because I enjoy it and for the exercise. Exercise 9, page 125. One. Are you doing anything special tonight? No, not really. Two. Do you fancy joining us tonight? I'm afraid I can't. Three. I'm afraid I can't join you at the cricket match. That's a pity. Four. Would you like to go swimming later? Sure, why not? Five. What about watching the match tonight? Sorry, I'm busy. Exercise 10, page 125. One. Let's meet at the front gate around 4.30 p.m. Two. I don't play squash very often. Maybe two or three times a month. Three. If you really like badminton, we can arrange to play together sometime. Four. It's a pity you can't join us at the swimming pool. Maybe some other time. Unit 8D. Vocabulary and Speaking. Exercise 1, page 128. FIFA World Cup Every four years, billions of spectators watch their national teams take part in the Football World Cup. It is a moment that all football fans look forward to. In fact, the FIFA World Cup is probably the most important sport event in the world. The World Cup was created in the 1930s, when Jules Rimet, a French football official, came up with the idea of bringing the best football teams in the world together to play against one another for the title of world champions. There was great enthusiasm for his idea, and the first FIFA World Cup was organised in Uruguay in 1930. The host team won the first World Cup when they beat Argentina 4-2. Since then, almost 20 World Cup tournaments have been played and the competition has often surprised fans around the world. Everyone was amazed when the USA beat England 1-0 in 1950. The 1966 World Cup surprised many fans when Italy lost 1-0 to North Korea. And Northern Ireland took everyone by surprise when they beat the host team Spain 1-0 in 1982. Many legends and many football records have also been made during the World Cup. The Irish 17-year-old Norman Whiteside was the youngest player to ever play in a World Cup. And Pele was the youngest to ever score in a match and win the World Cup. Ronaldo is the top scorer in World Cup history, with 15 goals. Football history is made every four years at the FIFA World Cup. Whatever the results, the championship brings people from every region of the world together, 
in the spirit of fun and sport. Exercise 4, page 128. One, rugby pitch. Two, cricket pitch. Three, hockey pitch. Four, football pitch. Five, golf course. Six, tennis court. Seven, badminton court. Eight, Squash court. Nine. Basketball court. Ten. Ice skating rink. Unit 8E. Writing skills. Exercise 2, page 130. Yes, can I help you? Oh, yes please, I'd like to join the swimming club. OK, let me just fill in an application form for you. What's your surname, please? Davis, that's D-A-V-I-S. OK, and your first name? Peter. Date of birth? It's the 2nd of the 10th, 1995. Right, and could you give me a telephone number, please? Sure. It's 976-5054. 976-5054. OK, got it. And would you like to give us an email address too? We sometimes email our members with special offers or notices. Oh, that's good. My email address is sdavis123 at gmail.com. OK. And could you give us an emergency contact number, please? You can give us the number of a close relative or friend. Uh, OK. I'll give you my mum's mobile number. It's 0786 213 2091. 0786 213 Is that right? Yes. OK. And the address, please? 17, King Street. OK. And which swimming sessions do you think you'll be attending? Uh, what are the choices? There's Monday, Wednesday or Friday. Wednesday, I think. OK. I'll tick Wednesday and you can always change your mind later. OK. Thanks. Now, just a couple more questions. Do you have any health problems at all, such as asthma? No, none. OK, that's great. And finally, do you already have any swimming certificates at all? No. Actually, I'm a total beginner. OK, that's fine. Right, that's everything. Welcome to Brighton Swimming Club. Thanks. Bye. Culture Corner 8. Exercise 1, page Exercise 5, page 
mascots. Schools, colleges, sports teams, charities, and even breakfast cereals have all used a grown man in a cuddly animal costume to help their image. These mascots attract publicity and promote public relations. Many English football clubs have an official mascot. They represent the team and hopefully bring them good luck as well. Here are three of the most famous ones. Gunnosaurus Rex is a friendly dinosaur. He has been the mascot for Arsenal Football Club since 1993. Gunnosaurus has proved to be very lucky so far. Since he has been with the club, they have won 13 titles, including the FA Cup and the European Winners' Cup. Gunnosaurus sometimes follows his team around Europe, making appearances in Champions League matches too. He is one of the most respected mascots in football, and all the fans love him. Billy Bantam is one of the Bradford City AFC team mascots. Billy is a tall brown hen with a big yellow beak, dressed in his team's purple and yellow striped kit. Billy always wanders onto the football pitch, waving to the fans before the game and at half-time. It seems that he's quite a good goalkeeper himself, and he sometimes takes part in penalty shootouts with other mascots and children. Fred the Red is the mascot at Manchester United Football Club. He is a big, cute red devil, dressed in a Manchester United kit. He usually appears before kickoff and at half-time during home games. He is very popular with the younger children. Like many other mascots, Fred often does charity work. In 2004, he abseiled down the side of Manchester United Stadium to raise money for charity. Going green, 8. Exercise 4, page 135. Project Aware. We all have our favourite sports or free time activities. But how many of us think about the effect they can have on the environment? Trekking in the mountains, fishing in a lake, or scuba diving near a coral reef are all examples of ways in which we interact with the environment through our sports. This means that we should take measures not to harm the environment and to leave it exactly as we found it. Project AWARE was founded in 2002 by the Professional Association of Diving Instructors in Switzerland. It is a non-profit organisation whose main aim is to educate divers on how to respect and conserve the underwater environment. They believe that we need to protect the aquatic world from pollution and protect endangered species. In this way, future generations will be able to enjoy the beauty of our oceans. Project AWARE provides education for adults and children on aquatic life, such as coral reefs, turtles, sharks and whales. It also organises competitions in underwater photography. But it doesn't stop there. Project AWARE volunteers take action to conserve the underwater environment. Every year in April, divers and volunteers take part in the festivities of Earth Day. Also, every September, thousands of divers participate in International Cleanup Day, 
by picking up rubbish from shorelines and the seabed. Their work is really making a difference, and thanks to them, our coastlines, beaches, and our underwater world will keep their natural beauty.